Hi, I'm Will Ruddick, and this is the fourth installment of the Village Market Simulator series. Um, today we're going to talk about how community and complementary currencies can fail. Um, as of now, as of 2016, there's thousands of community and complementary currency systems around the world, and generally they're, they're unregulated. And um, in a typical case, um, local businesses or consumers pay a little bit of money to receive a credit uh, in these currencies and those local currencies circulate and circulate and that's this is what we have here in a simulation of about 200 businesses as part of a, a similar network and there's a tendency for more credit to be in place than there is any sort of tangible backing whether it's liquid cash collateral or uh, or assets and so there's a lot of, there's a multiplier effect going on, um, which can be good in some cases or very bad in others. Um, what, uh, what typically happens in a, in a mutual credit scheme, or even these, these schemes where the currency is being kind of purchased into existence, is that the most uh, popular shops end up being the ones where most of the currency goes to. And so those shops end up collecting a large amount of these local currencies, and um, a typical case is that those shops don't have the ability to move that cash back into um, buying their stock or paying salaries fast enough. Um, and you know it may take several years for shops to be able to really move enough currency to make it a meaningful part of their business. Um, and so those shops um, quite often default, meaning that uh, they may have spent their currency into the community, but they're not accepting it back anymore. And once they do so, quite often there's a chain reaction. You get sort of a, um, a reputation risk uh, effect where all of the, the businesses around that business it, or supplying that business start um, defaulting as well and stop, stop accepting the currency. And in the end, um, if those businesses go back to the issuing organization, the ones who created the, the currency itself, whether it's a cooperative or a separate entity, if they go back there, they'll find that there, there is no collateral for it. There is no um, cash for it. And this is, this is what banks call liquidity risk, um, which basically means that there's nothing really behind the credit that they're issuing. Um, and this is, this is a, a risky thing for banks. And at least, you know, in some ways, banks have some regulations around it, even though they don't do a good job of, of adhering to those regulations. Um, community currencies, on the other hand, have almost no regulation to them. And um, some are, are for-profit models that uh, don't seem to mind that very much, and others um, would rather that not be the case. And so um, in this simulation that we have here, we have you know, just this, this um, basic chain reaction happening of businesses starting to default until no one's accepting the currency any anymore. And you have a huge amount of uh, euros, in this case, that have been pushed into the community that are now worthless um, to everyone holding them. So this is a worst case scenario <clears throat> and something we don't want, want to happen. So how do, we, um, how do we kind of solve that situation? What do we do to sort of safeguard that? So when we first started uh, in Kenya, we started with mutual guarantee where if you became a member, uh, you would get backed by other members in, in the network. And if you were to default, those other members would be liable um, to pay for your debts in the network. Um, that is a, is a great system when you have a very small number of businesses and you can moderate those sort of uh, crises. Um, otherwise, it becomes unmanageable faster and faster. Um, so what we began to do um, was to develop cooperative run businesses in those communities. And those businesses that are owned by the members act as the liquid and asset collateral for the system so that um, we can have a, a steam release valve, if you will, which we call credit clearing. Um, and if you keep, uh, the idea being that if you keep adding currency to the system uh, too much, it's sort of like a pressure cooker. It needs, it's gonna explode, so you have gotta release some of that steam. So what we do is we allow schools, for instance, um, if they collect too much currency in a short amount of time and they can't use it and yet they need um, they need Kenyan shillings for instance or, or euros to to buy something outside the community um, the collateral of these cooperative businesses allows that excess currency to be bought off 
um, and there are strict rules about how that can be in place. Um, we don't want all, you know, we don't want exchanges to be happening on a one-to-one -one basis constantly, where people get the currency and then exchange it back out. It's done at a level where where it needs to be done. In other words, there, if if a school has a credit level of say 100 euros and at the end of the month they've collected 150 euros, that excess 50 can be bought using the collateral from the, from the network. And so that adds a little bit of a, a pressure release. And at the same time, we are working um, to, to fill in those gaps and import replacing businesses so that the, anything that needs to be bought within those communities can be. Um, so the, the amount of uh, you know, euro collateral versus asset collateral it, that needs to be kept on hand is a, is a basic kind of risk analysis and we have uh, on our board we're lucky to have a risk manager um, that's that has you know helped us design some of our credit policies around that and uh, that's in some ways how we uh, maintain uh, an even distribution of the currency in these communities and also allow for larger, you know, middle-sized businesses to be secure in joining the networks. They know they're not going to get necessarily stuck with the currencies. And at the same time, it gives us a reason and a, you know, a, a big push to build more assets in those communities that are collectively owned. Um, so in this, in the next simulation that you've seen running here is, uh, is that situation where you can see some collateral in, in national currency in orange going back into um, some of those businesses and so there's this flow um, of local currency and uh, national currency where they do in some cases mix together um, so thanks for your time today um, talk to you again at our next installment Bye.